Hello YouTube viewer. In a previous video, I show the initial design of my homemade firebox. Well, after much tinkering, tweaking, and fine tuning, well, here is finally, hopefully, the final version of my homemade do-it-yourself $6 firebox stove. As you can see, the metal has lost some of its shiny luster appearance. Well, but the stove has a fire battle experience to show. Well, the structure of the original design is unchanged. Basically, six piece of inexpensive, readily available Simpson tie plate with simple cut interlock into a firebox shape. I made most, most of the change to improve airflow. More airflow provide more oxygen for the five to thrive. Well, in plain English, I enlarged the hole, cut and enlarged existing notches. Some side benefit is a little weight reduction. Well, let's start with the bottom plate. I enlarge all the central hole to 3A of an inch size. Uh, future burn would tell me I have to make even larger or add more holes. Move on to the back plate. Well, to each of the plate, I add two holes right above the bottom plate, right here. And the bottom A-shaped notch, I enlarge it to make it taller and wider. I also add a 2V notch at the top while saving the super rod hole here. Okay. Basically, the notch allows the fire to breathe better when I put a flat pan or pot on top of it. Likewise, I add a V-shaped notch here to the front plate to make it easier to top feed the wood and again to let the fire breathe easily. Well, the reason I use the V-shape cut on my plate here, here and here is that they are easy to cut. Thus, keep construction simple. Likewise, the holes are round easy to drill. The side plates are basically unchanged except for the two little notch at the very top and here where they used to support the rod or maybe a future grill plate and provide me with a little bit more clearance for the top feet port. Finally, I enlarge all the existing hole to 3 inch diameter to accommodate my specific support rod that I'm using to fit my situation. Basically, that's it for all the change. In summary, a simple, sturdy, flexible, and inexpensive firebox stove that you can easily make at home and that I will show you in a future video. And thanks for watching. Yesterday was a very windy day and a walk in the park I collect all this dead branch falling on the ground and cut it up to roughly finger size and they will be used for my test burn. Well, I layer the wood so that the air holes are not completely blocked by passing one horizontal layer, one vertical layer and so on. One horizontal, one layer going one way, the other layer go the other way. Well, 
to start a fire the, easy, the lazy, easy lazy way I have a piece of paper soaked in alcohol lay on top of the wood and on top of the paper I will have small tinder okay here go initial burn See by properly layering the wood crisscross, we allow air to come from the bottom plate to come through and feed the fire. When it gets started, you can feed additional wood from the top. It is a little bit windy today. And eventually, water is boiled and the food is cooked. Ah, boiling water, amazing. Leftover charcoal, but it's still hot. Okay, here is a burn using the uh, bottom feet plate. You don't have to load as much fire, but starting the fire the same way, you have to start it. And once it's burned, then you just have to push in the wood from the side. Well, with bottom feeding, the fire needs more tending. You have to keep pushing in the stick to keep the burning going. But at the same time, since you don't have such a mass of wood burning at the same time, you can control the fire intensity by adding more wood or by inserting more wood or withdrawing the wood. And eventually the wood are consumed and the wood come to a boil. Even though it takes a little bit longer, this on with the bottom feet.